go back to point zero. Exactly. Okay, this I don't know. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to understand the origins of the Big Bang and what was, what was there before that. I asked my friend, what's your name? Paul, I'm Mansoor and this is Zishan. Zishan. Does that belief represent the truth in reality? Because we should all be interested in the truth. Do you agree? I think you're talking about absolutism when that such a thing doesn't exist. So there is no truth? You were talking about an absolutism. Are you saying there is no truth? Do you think there is no truth? Well, there's one thing that you have to accept before you even come to the park, before you engage in conversation, before you do science and thus existence. Do you accept at the very minimum that you exist? Well, of course, that's why you're over here, but... Exactly. So that is something that's absolute. But well, you're talking about perceptions and beliefs, aren't you? And that, I'm just saying one person's belief can be true as true as somebody else's belief. Regardless of whether it's your belief or my belief, we have to accept here that you exist and I exist at the bare minimum, isn't it? So taking that aspect that, oh, there's absolutely nothing we can, we can agree on is false. It's a false premise. And it tracks back to Descartes, yeah? Who said, I think, therefore I am. But even that's got holes in it as well. So let's just say you exist, and that's the bare minimum. Would you also accept that there is uniformity, uniformity, regularity, and stability? What I mean by that is just the mere fact that we're standing here and we understand that we can leave, cars won't start flying, things won't randomly start combusting. Do you accept that there is some form of stability on this planet? Yeah, exactly. You accept that, yeah? It's not necessarily given by some divine intervention, is it? That's where we started. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So the first premise is there is existence, which you accepted. Second premise is there is uniformity, regularity, and stability, which you've accepted. Therefore, there is an existence that explains the regularity, uniformity, and stability of nature. Do you accept that? Then it comes down to it says the laws of physics versus the laws of. I beg your pardon? First, the laws of physics versus the laws of divine intervention. That's how we. I'm just asking a very simple question. But no, you're saying there's something that drives it, and I'm just explaining what drives it. I'm saying that using the laws of logic, yeah, because it's a logical syllogism, isn't it? There's two premises, therefore, there is a conclusion. For you to claim that this is false, you'd have to poke holes in the premises. Start in another debate or an argument, we can do that. But what I'm saying is if there's existence, if there's stability, therefore there has to be an existence that explains that uniformity, regularity and stability. At the bare bones, can we at least exist? Can we at least explain that much or accept that much? Yes. Yes, excellent. So now we have existence. Now, this is where the contingency then comes in. When we look at, let's just say, we are now giving attributes to that existence. If I have a bottle of water and that's got water in it, can I take a watch out of that bottle of water? Not unless there's a watch in there in the first place. Yeah. Well, no, because that's why I said a bottle of water, isn't it? Yeah. Can I concoct a watch from that bottle of water? I'm assuming you're going to say no, so why not? Because there wasn't one there in the first place. No. That's to make something, it doesn't have to exist in the first place. If I'm making a DVD player, it doesn't mean that there has to be a DVD player to begin with. Yeah, I'm sure you can see where I'm going. The necessary parts need to be in existence. Agreed? Yeah. Excellent. So a bottle of water cannot create a watch because the necessary parts aren't in there, yeah? Yes. Do you agree? Okay. So the point that I'm trying to get to is, would you exist that there is free will, there is power, and there is consciousness around you. Mm, okay, well they're all different things, they're not, they're not to do with the laws of physics. Free will and consciousness is not to do with physics. So. Do you believe that you're conscious? So, I, I'm also, yes. Yes, Nobody's okay. Not, there's no scientific independence to it. Yeah, no problem, that's yeah. fine. But you believe that you're conscious. Okay, do you believe that there is power? Just me pushing you or the ability of 
force equals ma. Okay, so like Newtonian physics kind of power. You can take it however you want, yeah. So if there is power here, surely the existence has to have power as well, has to have consciousness as well. Agreed? Mm, okay, well the power itself won't have consciousness, only, human, only uh, living things have, have, have consciousness. Only living things have power. Have consciousness. Have consciousness. What makes you say that? Because consciousness is to do with the intel is the mind and your sense of uh, your presence in the universe. And There's your no consciousness in a rocket stone. Really? Nope. What's your what's your evidence for that? It has to be evidence the other way, doesn't it? Not necessarily, because science is yeah, going... My yeah, there you go. Huh? Okay, no problem. But the point that I'm trying to say... Sorry, what's your name? Huh? What's your name? Paul. Paul. So, Paul, the point that I'm trying to say is, if you're seeing something that exists in nature, it has to exist in the existence that we have... that has created us. And I'm putting that in air quotes at the moment, because I'm... I'm just leaving that up there, yeah? So it's the example of the bottle and the watch that I said. That if there is, if we accept that there is consciousness, there's power, there's will to some degree, then we have to accept that the existence also has that as well. Would you also accept that that existence has to be pre-eternal? Pre-eternal as in? As in didn't come into existence, was, was always there. No. You wouldn't accept that? Okay, would you, okay. Let's take a step back then. If we take the argument from dependent, except that everything that's around us in our understanding is dependent. It's dependent on something else. Like you're dependent on something else, the grass is dependent on something else, concrete is dependent on something else. In that you know life exists only because it depends upon other things, but it's oxygen or food or water. Yes. Excellent, Paul. So, would you also accept that we cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things? Yeah, Otherwise, at what point you can? I'm not. I'm not smart enough to understand the origins of the Big Bang and what was what was there before that. Singularity of form and mass creation. Right. What I'm saying is 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 not to do with causality. It transcends causality. So what I'm saying is, logically speaking, let me give you an analogy, Paul. Yeah, that if I am going to, I don't know, throw my watch at somebody. I don't know why I would do that, but let's just say I'm going to do that. I have to ask Mansoor's permission. Mansoor asks this brother's permission and we keep going ad infinitum. Would I ever get to throw this watch? If there were infinite people <laughs> whose permission is needed. No, yeah. but there's only you know, 7 billion, so it's quite, 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 quite no. Yeah, I'm, it's a thought experiment. Yeah, no, because infinity never ends, does it? Exactly. Yeah. So, can you, can you see the correlation that I'm making, that we cannot have an infinite regress of dependent things, otherwise we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be here to begin with. There has to be an end, which philosophically we define as the necessary being for us to be here. Does that make sense? You call it a necessary being, some yes. would call it a singularity. Not necessarily, because the singularity also has a beginning. Now, this is the big question, isn't it? This is what this is debate. But whatever that thing is, time will is not, not be dependent, has to be independent. Time and space are not, are not linear, are they? Are but Paul, do you at least, at least agree that because we have a series of dependent things, at the end, to solve this conundrum, this problem, there has to be eventually a thing or an entity or an agency that is independent. Well, it could have just been a singularity for eternity. Whether you call it singularity or whatever, it has to be independent. Independent of what? Of anything and everything. Okay, let me define something that's independent. It doesn't have a beginning. It's not composed of parts and it can't be any other way. That's a philosophical definition of something that's independent. So, and something that's dependent is the opposite of that. I understand your argument that at some yeah. point there, was the, there had to be something to start all this off, even if it was nothing, and then that had to come into creation by something. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, why, you know, then it comes down to belief, doesn't it, in terms of whether you think that was some eternal entity. Eternal entity of... We're not going to that yet, Paul. No, no, but that's, that's ultimately the, the, the starting point, isn't it? There has to be something that created all this. Where did that thing come from? But, but even... No, but you, you circumvented what we've actually progress towards, which is that to say that 
where did that thing come from is by definition false because if you're saying where did that thing come from then that thing itself is dependent and we've already ag agreed that you can't have an infinite regress of dependent things so there has to be an end to that chain which philosophically is defined as a necessary being Aristotle might call it the first cause whatever you want to call it there has to be an end or the, the beginning so when you say singularity Sorry, no, uh, problem. We've got two young boys, uh, no problem, no problem. I, I think this is all about giving them an education in free speech and how uh, different debates are. are no, created. definitely. In Singapore, we don't get much chance to see. Excellent. So no, I thank you. Thank you for your time, chance. Paul. Thank, thank you for I your shall time. Think about your dependency. Yeah, def yeah, definitely. Thank you. Check it out. This is not just coming from a philosophical argument. We are Muslims, so Islam has you know, encouraged us to think and ponder that way so that we have a belief which is firmly grounded out of conviction of informed choice rather than simply believe by blind faith. Yeah. So we would encourage you to, to read the Quran, which we believe is a divine guidance from our creator, that necessary being. And that will tell us how to live our life and why we are here created yeah. and what's going to happen to us after we die. Because it's not a cycle of life and death. This is one life, one death and the consequence. Yeah. So please read the Quran and, and think about what we said. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Masoor, how, how, how did that go? Very polite, gentle, reasonable individual who came to have a discussion with us. You don't see that in Speaker's Corner here unless you can walk around and see people with T-shirts inciting offense. Yeah. You know, that's how the difference between genuine, sincere, reasonable individual from vile, filthy individual with a mentality which is really rotten, right? So I think the discussion could have been much more progressed if we had the time, but Definitely. they are visitors, they have to go. Yes. So we wish that, you know, somehow they would come across because we haven't given them the, I mean, in fact, if one of you can go and tell them which channels to watch, for example, they can watch this and reflect further, they're still here, so that they can think and ponder later in terms of what exactly um, the next step is because he was agreeing to but how do you make that progression to the next step of accepting that yes now having understood and accepted that there is a necessary being who has created us for a purpose must be wise in his purpose so what is that purpose how are we going to know this so this should have been the next step of discussion and we hope that individuals like this gentleman or people like like this gentleman, if you're on the same boat and you feel that, yeah, you agree so far that there is this element of a superpower, that's what you call yourself, a prime mover, a, a first cause, yes. a necessary being, an independent being who has no beginning, then ask yourself, you are created by that necessary being. Why? And how are you going to find out? Do you expect? that this necessary being is going to come down to you in your own home and tell you I created you for like this or somehow from the sky shout at you saying hey Alex if that is your name you know I created you for this reason look how big this cosmos is people don't appreciate it they they want God the creator come down to their level and personally tell them friend this is the reason I created you but think about how insignificant we are demanding this kind of expectation. How insignificant and small am I and you compared to this earth? Not even a speck on this earth, right? How small is this earth in our solar system? Like a speck. How small is our solar system in the Milky Way galaxy? It's like a speck. How small and insignificant is our Milky Way galaxy in the constellations of the universe? nothing speck we are speck upon a speck upon a speck upon a speck and whole world is such enormous such gigantic universe and yet you expect the creator to come down to you become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and, smaller and come down to an infinitely small to you and tell you my friend that's the reason I created you you have the wrong expectation that is why this has not been the way the Creator communicates with us to understand the reason of our 
creation. The Creator chooses from among us prophets and messengers, warners, guides, who are given proven evidence so that people can believe in them. And the final of them was Prophet Muhammad Now what evidences that he, that he bring or he brought is another question altogether. But you need to make your own journey to find what that is. We can share with you like we have been doing in our channels. What's your channel's name? Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. And what's your channel's name? Dawah Wise. Come on. But do watch, do watch other channels in which people are uploading the videos, the contents from Speaker's Corner. Yes. What we are saying is we have done this work for years and years. We are uploading contents in which we are having this discussion. We are engaging with these criticisms to help you to explore and to go through this journey of self-exploration and self-discovery. And finally, you will realize that the only ideology, the only religion, the only message that makes sense is Islam. Am I saying other than what is truly observed? What is observable truly? What is something that can be verifiable and verified? That Islam is the only belief system that people can have certainty of and have the certain consequences of in the hereafter. If you believe in it, salvation, in success, in joy, in tranquility, in happiness. And if you don't, for your own detriment, if you decide to go against this by your own choice, then what lies ahead? It will be failure, it will be suffering, it will be misery, it will be torture, it will be pain, it will be burning in hellfire. Do we want anyone to go to hellfire? Would you even want your enemy to go to hellfire? You might want them to be punished in this life for what they have done. Yeah. But you would not want them to go to hellfire. It's not a joke, people. Hellfire is a place where you don't want anyone to go, even your enemies. Because that is a place where it is not a joyous place. It is a punishment from God for your arrogance and stubbornness. We don't want anyone to go there. And that is the very purpose why we come to here, Speaker's Corner, in our channels and smile to Jannah, that, you know, you know from our own you know, uh, platform that you upload your videos and so on. We are taking our time and effort to share with you that you need to wake up to the reality. Enough of zombie scrolling. Enough of the fear of missing out, the mofo. That you think you're gonna go into social media and say, oh, my life is gonna be miserable if I don't go and scroll and see what's happened. No, your life is more important than zombie scrolling. Because you will one day end up dead, like I would end up dead and you'd end up dead. What are you gonna find out then? You'll be too late. So before it's too late, before death approaches us, what do we have to do? Zishan, before death approaches us, what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to learn our purpose, is to learn what Allah has told us via the Quran, via the scripture. And like the brothers discussed, the inference to the best explanation is the Quran. It is the Prophet Muhammad. It is the message that the Prophet and the previous Prophets have brought, which is there's none worthy of worship besides God, besides Allah, and the Prophets are sen sent by God. Now, if you analyze the Quran, you analyze the scriptures, you analyze the sayings and the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which we are not shying away from. Yeah, they're all there for you, forbidden prophecies. You can read the Quran, you can download it free from the internet. Yeah, you get a free Quran, forbid forbidden prophecies, they are there. You can see the challenges that the Quran is making. So it's all there for you. But you have to do something yourself. You have to get out of the rat race and a rat race which is constantly trying to get you going to work, coming home and becoming, you know, so engulfed with the dunya, with the world that you forget your purpose. It's very important that we take time aside and we reflect and we ponder like the Quran invites us to do. We're not here telling you do this, this, this and this. What we are telling you is here is the inference to the best explanation. If you have an issue with that, open up the book. Take time aside, open up the book. Don't become a zombie scrolling. Don't become a zombie at work. Don't become a zombie just going along with the flow. What you're supposed to do is take time aside, ponder and reflect. And then when you do these things, you will notice 
how Allah will open your heart to the truth. أقول قوي هذا استغفر ولكم وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.